Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy and this is my nest. First I want to update you. I've This is now five weeks I think since my last episode. Yeah I've done a lot so I'm going to show you everything that I have and we went on vacation. Went to the beach in New Jersey and we had a pretty good time. Most people were pretty good I would say depending where you went in terms of social distancing on the beach. The beach that we were at was severely eroded and it was very narrow and at prime time it was packed with people. There, there was no room between groups at all. So instead of walking to the beach close to the house that we rented, we ended up driving down to the end of the island and going to a beach that was much less crowded and we were able easily to be far away from other people. So it was a little extra work, but it worked out. Also, we didn't even go on the boardwalk except early in the morning. I would take walks between 6 and 7 a.m. and the boardwalk was pretty empty then. It was easy to keep away from people. And indoors, people were very good. They were all wearing their masks. However, as soon as you walked outside, about 70 to 80 percent of people would immediately take their masks off and it didn't matter how close they were to you <laughs> they would just walk around without their masks on so part of it was a little frustrating but we had a good time and we were able to keep ourselves safe during our trip while I was there I picked up a new mask I want to show it to you because it has interesting construction to it so it's your basic mask it has a little logo on it and the elastic in the back in, instead of going around your ears it goes around your head so put the whole thing around your head like this and the, see the elastic goes all the way around your head instead of just around your ears So I haven't actually worn it uh, out and about yet. I just washed it today. And I may take it with me to work one day this week and see how it does. I've decided if it doesn't work with the elastic around the head, I, it would be very easy to substitute um, ties. Because this pulls right through and I could slip a ribbon in there or whatever and make it a tie instead of a elastic. So we'll see how it works. Oh, another thing about this mask is it, it has two layers and they're separated so that you could insert a filter in between if you wanted to. So it's kind of a heavy duty mask and it'll also be interesting to see how well I can breathe through it. <laughs> All right. So first I wanted to update you about my Vasily hat, which I finally finished. Here it is. Ugh. Okay. So if I turn it inside out, it looks the same on the inside as it does the outside. You can't really tell unless you look at it very closely, but all of the cables are reversed. And the top here, you can see, is the, the medium brown gray color. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, it's the dark brown color. Things that you would notice unless you took time to inspect it. Couple of issues that I had. Well, I already talked about some of the issues I had. Other things. Uh, he had given. Uh, so this is called Va Vasily, and it's by Alistair Post Quinn. It's from his book Extreme Double Knitting. And I, he gave two different gauges for the hat. One in double stockinette, which is the fabric that you make if you're just making a double knit stockinette fabric. And then he also gives a gauge in the cable pattern. I was lazy 
and I did the double stockinette gauge. That's the front, or one side, and there's the other side. That was a mistake. I should have done a gauge in the cable pattern because my gauge ended up being too tight. Now I just showed you, I put it on my head and I can force it to fit, but it is very tight and I could never wear it that way. When it first came off the needles, it was only 16 inches in cir circumference, way too small. So I aggressively blocked it. I soaked it until it was sopping wet and then I put it on a balloon and I blew it up as far as I could to stretch the hat as far as I could and then I let it dry. Now it is, so I gained about two inches from that. Now it's about 18 inches in cir circumference, which is better, but it's still too small for me. So I need to find some child, small person with a small head that I can gift this to. I love it. I'm really happy with the way it turned out, but I can't wear it. So that's my Vasily hat. All right, I also finished the socks that I was making for my daughter. There we go. So this is Cascade Heritage yarn, the wave yarn. I used my own pattern, which is called Custom Fit Socks. I'll put a link for the pattern um, in the show notes if you wanna check it out. You can see they're very similar, but not identical. And they turned out perfect. So I'm gonna put them in my drawer and save them for Christmas. Now one thing I do every summer is I make little ornaments for my coworkers. This year, I made little bells, so I will show you them to you. And it has a little bell inside. So you can put them on your Christmas tree or wherever you want to put them. I made a bunch. I made four solid ones. Okay. And I made four striped ones. So I have four co workers, and I also have four kids in my Sunday school class. I've never made ornaments for my Sunday school class before, but I decided I would make some for them as well. They all have bells in them. And this is called, the pattern is Christmas Bells by Debbie McGrath. You can find information about the pattern on Ravelry, but the pattern itself is on a website called Knitting on the Net. I'll put a link in the show notes below if you're interested. These are super fun, very quick to make, easy. I like them. All right. What is next? What am I working on now? Well, I finished the socks for Amy, and I almost always have a sock on the needles, so I'm making another pair of socks, this time for myself. Usually I make a plain pair of socks and they're like my to-go project. I carry them around, I knit when I have time, and I work on them as an alternative to some other more involved project that I work on, for example this. This time I decided I would make my socks my main project. I knew I had lots of solid colors in my sock stash, so I went searching for a nice textured pattern and I came upon this. It's called Chalet Socks. 
by Nancy Bush, and it is from her book called Folk Socks. She, half of the book is like history and information, and then the other half is patterns for various folk socks. It's fun. It's a nice book. I've had it for a while. Let me see when it came out. It was published in 1994. I bought it in 2003, almost 10 years later. And here it is, 2020. This is kind of an older book, but it has great patterns in it. I This is my sock so far. Let's see. I can show you. Okay, this is the back of the sock that will come down to the heel. And then this is the side. There's like an XO pattern going down. And then this is the front. There, that's the front. It comes down over the instep and to the toe. It's all twisted stitches, and they're one by, one by one cables where you knit through the back loop. All the purls are done normal, but all the knit stitches are knit through the back loop. In the book, the, it's charted like this, and it's kind of a small chart to read. So I put it on the photocopier and I blew it up to a bigger size. Easier for me to read. And I, for this I am using Wildfoot by Brown Sheep. It looks pretty blue in the camera. And it is called, the color is called Deep Blue. But it's not blue. Well, it has blue in it. <laughs> it's what I would call like a teal color, a deep, not deep blue, but deep teal. It's like a dark, it, it actually looks bluer and lighter in the camera than it is in real life. It's actually darker and much more green. Now this is blue. And this looks blue next to it, but it's not. It's so funny how colors show up in the video. Now this chair comes out kind of green, but that's actually more of a teal color. It's just weird. It would be nice if I could figure out how to make colors look how they really look. <laughs> oh well. All right, so that's what I'm working on now. Also, uh, Knitter's Day Out is coming up in, at the end of September. Because of COVID-19, they're not having an in-person event this year. So they're doing a virtual event instead. So I am also working on two classes that will be done virtually for Knitter's Day Out. I will be doing a class on Intarsia and a class on the Fair Isle Slip Stitch, which I talked to you about earlier in another episode. So I'm going to be working on putting those videos together, and that's going to take me a couple of weeks coming up. So once again, it'll probably be a while till my next episode. <clears throat> Hopefully summer's going well for you. It's very hot here now. We're in our July-August doldrums, as I call them. Hot. We've been hovering around 90 for two or three weeks, and we have at least another week of that coming. It was nice to go on vacation and get a break from it. Even though it was hot at the beach, at least you're by the water, and you have ocean breezes, and you can run in the water when you get hot. It's just different being at the beach when it's hot than being at home. Hopefully you've been able to go on vacation. I know a lot of people can't because certain places are have high hot spots for COVID and then you end up having to quarantine and it's just a big mess. But we were fortunate we were able to go and have a good time 
and enjoy our summer a little bit. I hope everything is well with you. Let me know down in the comments. I'd like to hear what you're up to. And if you have any questions or things you want to tell me, also let me know. Thanks for watching and until next time. Bye-bye.